Lightroom and Photoshop are not the only assets you have when it comes to improving your landscape photography. My name is Austin James Jackson, a landscape photographer based in Southern Utah. Today, I'm going to be telling you guys about three of my absolute favorite must have plugins for landscape photographers. These are plugins that I think you definitely ought to own if you're a landscape photographer, because they're going to help you to improve your images in a variety of different ways. A lot of people get stuck just editing in Lightroom or just editing in Photoshop, not realizing that they can use an external program or software in order to help them to improve their photos instantly. And a lot of times these external softwares are really, really easy to use to create some really stunning effects. Now in today's video, I'm actually gonna show you four different softwares. You only need to have three of them. There's two that are interchangeable. You can use one or the other. I'm gonna show you both of them just to let you guys know. So you can look at them both and see which one you think that you would like better. I don't wanna waste any more time, guys. Let's go ahead and cut right to the chase. Here we go. So the way that you would launch these plugins, I'll show you first here in Lightroom, uh, is would be that you would click on the photo down here in the film strip. On a Mac, I'm going to control click or right click. On a PC, you're gonna right click. You're gonna go up to edit in, and then you're gonna see all of your plugins here. Uh, the ones I'm gonna be showing you today are all listed in this list. Now, if you're in Photoshop, it's even easier. You click on the layer or the background layer or whatever it is. You merge all visible in order to use one of these plugins. You're going to go up to filter and you're going to scroll down. You can see you've got everything that you would need right in here. Usually all plugins are going to lie right here, which is where all the ones I'm showing you today are going to be. Now, I'm going to be showing you guys four different plugins today. I think as a landscape photographer, you definitely need to have three of them. And I'm going to explain to you which two are interchangeable and you can decide which one you would like. So the first two plugins I'm going to be showing you are the Nick Collection Color Effects, which I think works really, really well. In addition to On One Effects 2023 is the current version. Depending on when you're watching this video, there might be a newer version out. Both of these softwares are really good. They are definitely both interchangeable. You can get whichever software you prefer, whichever one you'd like. Um, check them out both in this video and you can decide which one works better for you. Now, the first one here is the Nick Color Effects. This one comes for $150. You get a few other things, but this is the only thing that I use in the package it comes with. A little bit more expensive than on one, but I'll show you why I really like it. So when you launch your photo in here, you can see I've got this particular photo here is the one I chose to launch in here. You've got tons of filters on the left side. You can star some of your favorite filters. I've starred the ones that I like to use sometimes. Um, you can do presets, customs, you can import stuff. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do for landscape specifically. There's a few filters that work really well. And you can, of course, play with some other things in here. This soft focus sometimes works well to create a little bit of glow, but I don't use it very much. But the filters that I do use quite a bit include polarization, which you can see as I increase the polarization, it gives you like a polar polarized effect. Now this is not going to replace a polarizer in the field, but it does help to bring out colors a little bit better than what you would see if you just dragged up the saturation slider. I don't know how it works. Don't ask. It does work really well though. I like just bringing up that strength to bring out some colors in the scene. You can stack filters on top of each other. So let's say that I wanted to use the pro contrast next. I can go ahead and click that. Now pro contrast is really cool because it does something called correct color cast. So you can slide this over. You can see as I do that, it doesn't do a lot to my image because there's not a big color cast. But if you had a really big color cast on your image, a lot of times if you slide this slider over, it will let you know that your image is definitely not neutral or not going to be looking realistic when you slide this over. Now, this should be taken with a grain of salt. It's not always accurate, but it does work pretty well for me. A lot of times when I slide this over, I will notice like, okay, hey, my photo was a little warm. It was a little cool, whatever it is. And then I will adjust from there. Now you can go and also correct the contrast. Essentially, this just adds a little bit of contrast. Usually for me, it does what it thinks is correcting the contrast and then dynamic contrast, which kind of almost adds a little bit of an HDR look. So you want to be pretty subtle with that, but you can do all of that and then you can protect the shadows or the highlights, which is really nice to have that option as well. I use the pro contrast quite a bit. Now, the other filter that I really like here, uh, you'll see I have sunlight start. I don't generally use that one anymore. It does kind of give you this nice glowy look so you can play with it and see if you like it. But I like the tonal contrast. When I use the tonal contrast, I usually zero all of these boxes out and start fresh. Now, tonal contrast adds 
contrast in the highlights, midtones, sh or shadows. Um, a lot of times lately, I've been increasing the highlights and then dropping the midtones and dropping the shadows to actually decrease that contrast in my scene. Um, but you can totally use it as you see fit. I know a lot of photographers that add like 15 to 20 points uh, positive here every time they edit. So totally up to you as to what you want to do. When you're done, you can go ahead and hit apply. It'll send it right back to Lightroom or right back to Photoshop, wherever you came from. Now, if you didn't like color effects and the hefty $150 price tag, I do really like on one effects 2023. It's normally, I think $70. A lot of times I see it on sale for 50 though. So if it's not on sale, maybe wait until it is. But the nice thing about on one effects is really similar. You can click add filter and you have all these different filters similar to what we just saw in over there in, uh, in the Nick collection. So there's a lot of different photo effects you can apply. This is uh, this software is a lot more intuitive and easy to use in my opinion. It's really easy to tell what each filter does just by the name and then scrolling over you can see the before and after. Again, there's just a couple effects that I like for landscape photography here. Um, probably the biggest one is the dynamic contrast is really similar to the tonal contrast. You also have some presets which are kind of nice here. You can toggle through the presets and get to a spot that you like. Something like that soft works really well. So you can see all that's doing is increasing the large. Now I can go in and make some adjustments from here in order to kind of increase the contrast and ultimately like kind of the micro sharpness or micro clarity almost in some of these areas. You can just like in the previous software, you can go ahead and click add filter and stack multiple filters on top of each other. For this one, um, there's, there is a couple other fun filters. Sun flare can actually be really fun to use sometimes. Um, if you go and change the sun flare to, there's a few that I like in here and you can actually flip this around and then click on this button here. You can drag this sun flare wherever the sun appears and then it gives it this nice like flare look, which is definitely not for everybody to add something like that to their image. But I know a lot of you guys may like to do stuff like that. So it is a possibility to use a filter like that. It's fun to have definitely, uh, even if you're not going to use it. And there's just a ton of other options. I really like glow here. I like doing the lighter preset for a photo like this. You could do darker if you had a darker photo or normal, just whatever you see fit. You can see it changes the settings down here. Um, and there's just so many different options, so many different filters in here that you can use to fine tune your photo. This is really nice, especially for those of you guys that feel like you edit your photo. Maybe it's not quite where you want it to be, but uh, you know that something else needs to be done to it. You have all these filters that you can play with and adjust. And of course you can do things uh, like curves or color adjustment or color balance. All these things you can already do in Photoshop or Lightroom. So I generally don't do them here, but you certainly could if you wanted to. So lots of different options here. Uh, lots of different filters. You can see all the filters right here. Really highly recommend this software. Like I said, you don't need to own both on one uh, effects and DxO color effects. Just pick one, whichever software you like better. On one is cheaper. I'd probably recommend on one for most people. If you already have the Nick collection though, the Nick collection will work great and you don't need to buy this additionally. So choice is yours. Okay, the next software I think that is just really, really nice. Uh, maybe you've seen some videos on my channel about it before. You've probably seen some Facebook ads, whatever it is, but it is the Topaz Photo AI software, which is becoming better like every couple of weeks. It's just getting so much better. So I'm always updating. You can see there's an update now. I literally just updated it like two days ago. It's always becoming better, but I'll show you guys kind of what the software does, what's really cool about it. So essentially for us landscape photographers, the best thing it can do is remove noise and sharpen our photos. We don't really need faces. We don't really need to preserve text. The adjust lighting and the balance color are both uh, interesting to use. That's for sure. There's definitely some fun things you can do there. But for now, for landscape photographers, I think you're going to stick in most of these two modules here. And I'm going to show you the problem with this photo and how we're going to fix it. So I hit command plus to zoom in. You can probably see how blurry this line is here. Now I want that line to be not blurry. Uh, essentially, my problem was I focused right here using my telephoto lens. I didn't realize that I needed to do a focus stack and focus back here as well. So I missed the focus. It's not a big deal for social media. As you can see, you can't tell when I'm zoomed out, but when I zoom in, it is pretty blurry. So if I wanted to print this image or anything like that, blow it up later, I would want to fix it. So I loaded this photo into the software. It automatically turned these two uh, modules on, removing noise and sharpening. 
Removing noise, I'm totally happy with. You can see it's not a super noisy photo to begin with, but it did remove the noise. Uh, look on the left side here. This is the before and the right side is the after. As I slide this, you can see how it's removing some of that noise, especially that color noise that's up in the sky there. But the sharpening, it didn't really do a good job. I'm going to open the sharpening box here and I'm going to select lens blur because that's what this is, is lens blur. It's not motion blur. You can see now how quickly it sharpened that edge, super quick. Um, now, a lot of people will complain because they don't like the like artifacting or you can see how it's a little bit sharper right here than it is right here. So you can simply turn the strength down to wherever you see fit just to sharpen this just a little bit. Because again, I want this to be as sharp as possible in case I want to blow this up later. You can see the less sharp we do, the more seamless it looks. So you can totally decide which number is going to be right for you. Now this software works great on night photos and other things like that where there's a lack of sharpness, images are really noisy, um, and it's so, so powerful. I really like the software. Like I said, couldn't recommend it enough, especially for landscape photographers or especially if you are like a wildlife photographer or just really anyone that ever needs to fix sharpness or remove noise from their photos. This thing works great. Absolutely love it. Couldn't recommend Topaz Photo AI enough. Now last but not least here, we've got On One Resize AI. I think On One Resize is a great software. I really, really like it for resizing my photos. Now, you might be thinking, why do I need to resize my photos? You know, if I want to send one out for web or social media or whatever, I just send 2,000 pixels out of Lightroom and call it a day. Now, you want to resize your photos if you're going to be printing or doing any enlargement or anything like that. This is the software that I use for printing my photos. My prints get so many compliments about the resolution, how nice they look. So I think that uh, if you're not using this software or a similar software to resize your photos, you are really selling yourself short. Essentially what you want to do here is you want to open this photo size box. You want to change this to inches. So let's say I wanted to adjust the width and height on this image. Um, if I wanted to print, you can see this is the default width and height on my image. It's probably larger than what yours is unless you're shooting with the Sony a7R 4 or 5 because it does have 60, like 1 or 60 megapixels. So my file sizes are large. If you're shooting with a smaller megapixel camera, most people are in the 20s, your image size will be smaller and you'll need to enlarge it. So let's say you want to enlarge your image to like 40 by 60. You would simply type 40 on the height and the width would snap to 60, just like that. However, I actually want to show you, uh, I'm just going to show you at 20 by 30, which I know is not enlarging it at all, but it, the software is going to run slower and I just want to show you for the sake of this tutorial how it works. So adjust your size. Let's say I want to do 20 by 30 print and then the resolution. Let's say my you can call your printer up and say, what resolution do you want me to send you my file at? They might say 300, 150, 72, whatever. Let's just say 150 for sake of this. Now. I've got a 20 by 30 photo at 150 pixels per inch is the resolution. Now I can go down to sharpening and I'm going to check the sharpening box and I'm going to use the print preset. This is going to sharpen it for print. You're probably noticing you can't tell what I've done because I'm so far zoomed out. Go ahead and click 100 to zoom in and you can even zoom in a little bit further if you want and toggle this before, after, before, after. So you can see how this just makes it nice and crisp and detailed. I also like to slide this threshold. I usually go to about five um, and then I'll adjust things from there. You can increase or decrease the detail, increase or decrease the amount. Ultimately, there's not like a winning combination here. You should just do whatever you think makes your photo look the best for your print. Again, you'll, you will want to be zoomed in looking at it a little closer. If you are totally zoomed out, you're not going to be able to tell. So zoom in toggle the settings here, and then you're just going to go ahead and hit export whenever you're done down here and you can send it out for print. Then you'll send that file directly to the printer, whether it's a JPEG or a TIFF, whatever your printer wants, you're going to give them exactly what they want and then tell them that you don't need your file adjusted because you've already done it yourself. You've created or decreased the amount of pixels. So the printer doesn't have to do any guessing. Your prints are going to look a lot better if you use this software. So I did want to note that every time I make one of these videos, people always just think it's to get some money because I'm getting paid by these companies to promote their products. 
Here to tell you, I am not getting paid at all. I could have featured any product that I wanted under the sun. Uh, I chose these products because I think that they are great to use. I think they're gonna help you to create better photos. I do have affiliate links down below. If you use my affiliate links to buy the product, I get a really small kicker. It doesn't cost you anything, um, but I have affiliate links for hundreds of different products. I could have promoted a different product with a different affiliate link. I'm honestly promoting these products to you guys because I think they are great for landscape photography. They're things that I use every day when I'm editing my landscape photos, and I think they're gonna help you to improve your photography. So if you are gonna purchase one of these softwares, please use the link down below. I'd really appreciate it. Like I said, it gets me a really, really small kicker. It lets the company know that I sent you their way. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Really hope it was helpful. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you're serious about becoming better at photography. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.